welcome up our football pundits as well. We've got Lee Keegan, Cora Staunton, and we also have Peter Canavan, who's going to be joining us later, and David Tuberty is going to be with us as well. Oh, Peter's with us now, too. Peter, great. I thought you weren't going to be with us for this. Come on it's in. Me. It's me. Mm -hmm. I'm over here, Peter. With us. Um, How are you? Look, Good I suppose the best place to start, lads, is Mayo for Sam. You know, it's pretty simple after the weekend we've just had, Lee. This is the talk that's going to be out there. Mayo, the best-ranked team in the country, and they're looking good. I ranked them better since me and Ushin left last week. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't want to say I, it. I think we're the issue for the last <laughs> number of years. Um, yeah, they'll be happy. I, I do think it's a big step up from Gola last weekend to Roscommon, and we, we probably found that probably the hardest part back in 19, we'd be carrying the league final, and we never got the championship pace or level that we required, and we got caught in Roscommon. So... Roscon will be in a really good place in terms of how their league campaign went, how they finished, and the look at the game last weekend. And there, there's holes there in Mayo. We've seen that goal had four goal chances at the weekend. So there is a bit of work for Mayo to do and, and, and cover up some of those probably cracky moments, creaky moments they had. So, but listen, Kevin McSay made no secret about it. They want to do well in the league. They won it. They won the Connacht League as well. So they're going to, have to win competitions. I do think they're going to take provincial uh, status serious as well. And they want to continue that momentum as well. So... I do feel they're probably in a harder position than most, and same for Ulster teams as well. I think they're coming up against a lot more Sharks than the likes of the Leinster and the Munster provincial uh, teams. Um, so potentially Mayo are looking at the Galway, Roscommon, and, and Galway again. So mm. it's it's a very hard route, uh, but they plan well for it. The, the downfall for Mayo is can they keep them fresh and consistent and, and hungry for the year ahead? And uh, I expect a cracker on Sunday. Mayo for Sam, potentially. Yeah, but winning is a habit, Cora. You know, if you're Kevin McStay, you're saying, right, let's win everything in front of us. Let's win the league. They've done that. Let's win the Connacht Championship. Go direct and see what happens. Because, as Lee said, it's a tough route, but I'm sure he's going to want to keep winning. Yeah, and knowing Kevin well, I suppose that's exactly the way he wants. I suppose any sports person or player that goes out to play, they, they go out to win. You never go out to lose. And, yeah, any silverware that's there, you want to win it. And you could see that on Sunday with Mayo. Um, yeah, I think they're in a really good position. Um, I think what Kevin has done, he's evolved the team a little bit from last year. Um, you know, there's obviously a few players that's come through, you know, Jack Coyne, Sam Callaghan, we've seen at the weekend. But then he's also probably um, um, re-energised a couple of players. We see Conor Loftus now playing centre-back, who's never been there before. We obviously see Aidan inside. He's been there, you know, in, in fits and starts. So I think he's re-energised them. I think there's players that's come back that, you know, maybe... Um, under James, probably didn't get a get a full opportunity. So I, I just see the team they're they're in a in a really good place. They're humming, um, and I think yeah, going forward they'll be happy with their league campaign. But you know, to have to switch from from league football to championship in seven days, you know, we're probably lucky that it's in McHale Park. If we had to go to the Hyde on Sunday, I I think it'll be um, a lot more difficult. Um, and then to think that you yeah, if you know we potentially get over Roscommon, then you're in Pierce Stadium in two weeks' time. So. It's a very difficult route for Mayo to, to, to obviously navigate, but they, they have had lots of positives um, in the league. We have found players, obviously, you know, Lee jokes about himself and Onoshin going out to the team. They're huge losses, but to discover players like Sam, Jack Coyne, players like that, um, you know, to have the likes of, you know, Tommy Conroy back, he was gone for most of last year, to have um, the likes of Ryan O'Dunn, who was out for a long period last year. You know, we didn't see Killian O'Connor on Sunday, but, you know, he's only come back to form from his serious injury. So there's a lot of positives, but it's a long road. You know, it's only April now. Um, yeah, so as may, we, you know, you need to downplay it a bit. I'm sure Kevin is. They're looking at Ross Common, and that's, yeah, that's the next goal and, and see after And that. Jackie, just, Davy Burke will have the spear sharpened for that's the weekend. It. There's no doubt about it. And Peter, I'm just looking from an overall point of view, get your view as well, Dave. Would you nearly need a degree in logistics to be an inter-county manager this year? Just to three peaks that you must hit, depending on what your priorities are. How, how difficult is it to navigate that terrain, to build up a panel and confidence in the league, to give the provincial championships a tilt and get a good seeding, and then to peak properly for either the Talshan Cup or the Sam Maguire round robin later Ab in the year? Absolutely. You can break it up into three, no problem. And the battle of wits with the managers has started before a ball has been thrown because... You, you know, it's to win the All Ireland. For some teams, they could have to play ten, possibly eleven games yeah. to win a, an All Ireland in a short space of time, uh, a very short space of time. So um, that's the worry. That the one worry that I would have from from Mayo's point of view, the standard that they're playing at from the very first game mm -hmm. against Galway, the, the, they were pretty good and they've got better. Can they maintain that the whole way through to to the end of July? That's the conundrum and the challenge for them. They do have backup. If you look at their bench on Sunday, you had Tommy Conroy, Owen McLaughlin, Killian O'Connor, and the Hessian, arguably you know, four of their best players. 
Um, so they, they do have backup, but they're going to need it um, when they get through. So do, do managers now, how serious will some managers take the provincial championships? Is this the beginning of the end for the provinces? Uh, I, I hate to say it because um, my provincial me medals mean a, a hell of a lot to me and they were hard earned and there's a tradition to it. And I know Ulster and, and Connacht at the minute, maybe it means more to them that, than the other provinces, but it looks like it. There's no doubt about it. Managers, I think their priority is going to be the round robin. And uh, a lot of teams are in that already, regardless of how well they do. And um, some would argue that if Mayo could beat uh, this weekend, that that would strengthen. They'd be in a better mm -hmm. position, possibly. Who knows? But um, so, without a doubt, to, to answer your question, it'll be a case of whatever team uh, gets their peak, you know, times their training and all the rest, so that they're playing their best football at the end of June and end of July. And at the minute, it's a wee bit easier for Dublin and Kerry to do that than it is for the Connacht and Ulster teams. What do you reckon, Dave? Yes, you can, you can see there from uh, as he's saying about Dublin, like Dublin really haven't they've tipped away through the league and they won't peak probably now till I suppose May would it be. Mm. So they kind of tip away through Leinster, the league through Leinster and thing where you see where Rory Gallagher with Derry, he's, he's probably had to go hard at the moment with a small panel of players. Next minute he's going out in three weeks time, uh, first round of championship where he has to go hard again. So there's no real layoff for Derry. Down in Ker well, you've the same thing with Kerry. Um, they've really they're coming off on holidays. I think next week. So, <laughs> so they've they've kind of tipped through the league. They haven't they haven't strengthened the panel that much, but they don't have to peak now as well until Dublin. Have you seen much this season that the game has evolved, Dave? Like uh, with the style of football you played, as Declan was saying, to become the highest scorer in the league. And I was seeing an awful lot of your games. You were an out-and-out -out target man. Uh, with the way defences are set up, obviously that has waned. But this year, any evolution from what you can see? You can see a few teams using the long ball again. Like you've seen Dublin now, the, the last few, day, the last day, they got two, was it three goals from long balls yeah. into the full forward line. And the big teams have seemed to start using that again. And I think that might be a way to get around this blanket defence the odd time. Um, we've seen Kerry last year, uh, David Clifford, you can see that the famous catch he did over... Uh, Kelly that came down with the ball was long ball in, so it's I suppose since I started off um, there wasn't really much blanket defences, <laughs> but uh, as the, the years went on, I kind of seen myself probably moving out the field trying to get onto ball, which a lot of teams are doing. With Shane Walsh, you've seen the last day he came out the field, he's come out the field to get the ball. Shane McGuigan was the same way last day, he's to come out and look for the ball because there's no space inside. It's tough enough too, it's bleak, isn't it? Though, isn't yeah. it? Because, yeah. like, I mean, in fairness, like, if you're out and out like that, it just it does kind of kill off the game. You want these, you want to expose those one on ones where everybody's actually going it, for it's it. It's a though. dangerous game, though, as well, because yeah. you know you, you think like someone like Thomas Sullivan who picks up one of the rest players, and we, we see how devastating he is going forward. So I think that gives incentive then to some of your attacking guys that can punish the the best forwards. So I think that's where the evolution is kind of getting mm. nearly mixed up. Where if we see like a Shane Welch who's playing deep the last day. I don't think he's a threat to Mayo. Uh, not necessarily where you put him inside last year against Tom O'Sullivan. Again, we're mentioning Tom. Then he's on the back foot straight away and, and he has one of his best All-Ireland performances or best performances we've ever seen. So it's trying to get that balance. Uh, I, I was really intrigued how Dublin played on Sunday. Uh, it was great to see long direct ball going in because we've talked about Derry and their setup and a lot of teams are doing the same kind of setup. But it goes back to the old-fashioned long ball in, give it to your best uh, winner. And essentially that was the game winner in the second half. So I think that's where I probably got a bit of that dreaded feeling that we're going to see more from Dublin uh, and the fact that we got to see Conal Callan, the shark that is inside and do the damage he did and McCluskey is one of the best one-on-one -on -one defenders we've seen from last year he took out Shane Welsh and, and the top players last year he had a real hard time that second half but that's only because we've seen Dublin at last go direct uh, and that for me gives the blueprint for potentially all our winners if they do that throughout the season so I think yeah we are defensive but I think we can eliminate that but the, the, the long ball as David said so Cora, you see Killian O'Gara, he looks like a guy who's maybe come into the setup and said, I'm going to have a crack at this, and everything is direct with him. And then Dublin needed somebody like him, didn't they? Put their hand up, a new player coming through, maybe Tom Lehiff, and that's. Yeah. There has to mean a huge amount more. Yeah, um, I'm a bit like Lee. Uh, dirt, uh, and obviously, probably that's from a Mayo perspective. Dublin would be a worry for me. I know they've been, you know, average throughout the league, and, 
you know, even the last day, you know, they'd probably glimpses of, you know, the old Dublin. But yeah, I just think that they're, you know, they're just coming into form now, and you know, they've time to build in for championship, and they've found a few new players. You know, obviously the, the talking point has been about Cluxton coming back, and you know, they've found a really good goalie there in O'Hanlon. You know, Darren New coming in corner back, Killian O'Gara. They've found a few players. You know, they've come in under the radar. We haven't seen too much of obviously Mangan, who's come back into the panel. Jack Mack, you know, so Brian Howard, we haven't seen much of them through the league. They're all to come back in, so they're nicely building. And yeah, it, it's a big worry then when you see the likes of Khan, you know, the way he's performing now, come back into it. You know, obviously, Kieran Kilkenny um, didn't start the last day, you know, you know, that's which was a, you know, a huge shock. And then he comes on, and, you know, all of these players are kind of getting back into form. So yeah, to, to see the likes of O'Gara, it's, you know, I, I think because of, as Peter said, you could have to, you know, eight, nine, ten games to, to, to win it this year. Um, it's the, the, the uh, teams that have strength and depth in their panel because there's going to be injuries um, to, to players going right throughout the league. It's, if, it's, if it's the likes of a Con that can, gets injured or if it's an Aidan O'Shea or a really big player, if it's a Clifford in, in Kerry, then how can teams manage? But you know, in, in most big squads, the Mayos, the Dublin, the Kerry, they have strength and depth in most positions. But if it's, if it's a star player, then they're going to struggle, which if you are Mayo and you have to play seven or eight games, um, you know, and, and one of your big players gets injured, then that's a big worry. Yeah, they've seen the cost of that in the last couple of years, haven't they, mm -hmm. for sure. What about you then, Peter? How are you rating the dubs and who else do you see in the front-runner category if you're taking some of those other counties we've touched on? Where are your, I suppose, your big contenders coming from? Yeah, it has to be Dublin, um, for me. The, the debate over Cluxton is very interesting and uh, I can't see him being used but it's what he's going to bring to the panel outside of that. Why would he come back if he wasn't being used, generally? Um, um, uh, there was a very interesting thing happened on, on Sunday when we were covering the game. Paul Flynn was at the game. Mm -hmm. And when he came back, and this to me, when, when I thought about it, says, right, this encapsulates why Dublin won the All-Irons, that they had his mentality and the mentality like him. He came back and he was very critical of Shane Walsh hitting the, the freeze with his left foot. Now, for most people, Shane Walsh can do whatever he wants because he's Shane Walsh. Look at the scores he scored on Sunday. Breathtaking, superb. Most teams, if he wants to kick it with his left foot, you know, eight times out of 10 or nine times out of 10, he's kicking it over the bar. But he was saying, if I was a, 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 a Galway player, I wouldn't have been happy with that because he was reducing. If his right foot's a, a stronger foot, then he, he should be. So that, to me, gives you an example. When, when Dublin, were playing when he was in his pomp, when they were winning all Ireland and Clutch, and it was all about the process. There was no, their stats, their shooting stats the other day was what, 10 out of 26, 30%. When they were winning all Ireland, their shooting, they didn't shoot from silly positions. It was all playing to the process and you have to do things the way they should be done. So Stephen Cluxton will bring that honesty and getting the process back in the way it should be. That's my take on it, because David O'Hanlon's playing that well. He's a young lad, he's got his chance. Uh, he's, he's been one of their, their, their bright spots. So it's trying to get their mentality back into that winning mentality, and he's one of the, one of the leaders in the group. So I can only imagine that's why he's there. And in terms of their development, um, Lee talked about them using the long ball. They're also very good on the counter. They have plenty of runners. They have Jack McCaffrey, Paul Mannion, Brian Howard to come back into that. And I think they can time the run. And there's definitely, um, uh, it's going to be a big push for them this year. And uh, I, think they're, they're, I think they're the team to beat. Mm, interesting. Yeah. David, who's your uh, front runners? Who's your team to beat this year? Team to beat, I think I said Sunday night it was Mayo. I just uh, like the way that um, Kevin McStay has gone from the day one. Um, he's he's planned out that he wants to win the league, and I'd say he he wants he wants as much silverware as he can. Um, the, as the, the folks have been saying there, that strength in the panel, and there's only a few teams around that have strength in the panel. I don't think um, sure Dublin have strength and Galway have strength and. They've got uh, Mayo have strengthened the benches, where it just looks like Derry haven't strengthened the bench. Kerry are the same way. Kerry probably haven't found that player that if David Clifford gets injured, who's going to come in for him? If Shawnee O'Shea gets injured, who's going to come in for them? Where in Dublin, they have replacements. In Mayo, they have replacements. Galway, you've seen them the last day, they have replacements. So, yeah. Tron, Tron the Tron, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Can I ask you a final question? Are you happy enough with the Talchon Cup, the promotion it's going to get? We'll probably know eight of the Talchon Cup teams after this weekend. Are you happy enough with the, with the way it's situated? 
Well, hopefully my own team now won't be there. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in, just in general. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a, you can see last year the way meat uh, went about it. Um, there was great buzz in Mullingar afterwards. It was, and you see they're playing in the All Ireland qualifiers this year. They've, they made it to the group stage, so there's great incentive for teams who are playing in the Cheltenham Cup to get into the All Ireland series next year, which is it's a great boost for any team. Look for, forward to it. Right. Well, Peter's gone for a big look for the Dubs. Mayo over here. I'm guessing the two Mayo people are going to tell me Mayo are going to win the All-Ireland Core. Let's start with you. Give I us a I couple won't put that pre answer. much pressure on them now. So um, <laughs> I think they'll be there or thereabouts. Um, I'm probably a little bit with Peter. I think Dublin are probably um, in prime position for it. Um, and if I was to probably put a team outside that I think Galway are in fair away. I really, they're probably, if I was to put a punt on it, Galway are probably just... Watching them the last day, they were poor. Um, they still kept, you know, three points in it. Missing Killian McDade, I think he's a huge player for them. Obviously, John Heaney went off after half time or around half time, and I just think they're building. I think they have quality all over the pitch. I think Damien Comer isn't fully fit yet. Shane Walsh is only coming back into it. I just think they've unearthed a few players as well through the league. Um, you know, I think it's Keane Hearn at wing back. They just have found Johnny Maher midfield. They've found a few. So I think um, if I think they, I'll give them a right chance. So if I'm probably going to go a little bit outside the box, I think it's going to be Galway. I even bone pick up David like he picks Mayo the year I leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have um, <coughs> similar to Core. I, I, I have just a sneaky, sneaky suspicion with Galway. Um, I just think with the depth they have again, uh, I can't go with Jack either. Give Galway a double. Uh, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go. I, I just have a, like Peter. I just think Dublin are building nicely, um, and I just feel if they get the run right, the injuries right, and and. Their direct game plan, the way it's going, I think they're going to be very hard to stop. So basically, Lee's tipped everybody. Basically, yeah. Listen, it works. Politician. You know, yeah, look, it's working well for you. Uh, look, thanks a million for being with us. Really looking forward to having a great year with all of us. Please uh, put your hands together for our football pundits, please. For Peter, for David, for Cora and for Lee. You guys can stay there if you want. Have a look. Here is our season's promo. This will just set the tone nicely for you. Here's what we have coming up for the year ahead.